Hello friends, this video on NEET Wave Optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 17. In Young's double slit experiment, the slits are 2 mm apart and are illuminated by photons of two wavelengths, lambda 1 is equal to 12,000 angstrom and lambda 2 is equal to 10,000 angstrom. Okay, so uh, fine. At what minimum distance from the common central bright fringe on the screen, 2 meters from the slit, Will a bright fringe from one interference pattern coincide with the bright fringe from the other? So basically here we are talking about two different wavelengths of light with which we have tried to perform this to get this interference pattern on the screen. Okay, so what are the uh, values which are given in this problem? So first of all, uh, we are given capital D which is the distance of the screen from the slit which is 2 meters. We are also given small d which is the distance between the two slits that is 2 millimeter fine and then we are given the two different wavelengths right. So let's first try to find out the location of the bright fringe for both of these wavelengths okay. So let us first talk about the first case that is first cases for lambda 1. So in this case the position of a bright fringe. Now, in general also the position of a bright fringe is given by this expression y n is equal to n lambda capital D by small d, right. So, in the first case y1 will be equal to n1 lambda 1 capital D by small d and in the second case that is for lambda 2, y2 will be equal to n2 lambda 2 capital D by small d. So basically this y1 and y2 they tell us the position of a bright fringe for the two wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 respectively. Now capital D and small d will remain the same because the setup is still the same right. Now as per the question when they coincide what coincides? So if you read the question carefully, it says that we have to find out that minimum distance for which the central bright fringe from lambda 1 and the central bright fringe from lambda 2, they would coincide. So it's not basically talking about the central bright fringe. It's like, like this is how you get it on the screen, right? You have alternate dark and bright bands. Now let's say that this is the central this is the central fringe. So we have to find out what minimum distance from the central fringe. Let's say this is the point where the one bright fringe from lambda 1 and one bright fringe from lambda 2 would coincide. So we have to find out the distance of this point P from the central bright fringe. So I hope it is clear to you now, right? So we here we are trying to find out the position of that bright fringe for lambda 1 and for lambda 2. Now when they coincide, coincide means what? y1 and y2 will be equal because both of them are coinciding. That means they are located at the same position. So when they coincide, y1 must be equal to y2, right? And let's say that this should be equal to y. So that means L1 lambda 1 capital D by small d should be equal to N2 lambda 2 capital D by small d. So these will cancel. And therefore, we can say n1 by n2 is equal to lambda 2 by lambda 1. And lambda 2 and lambda 1 values are given that is 10,000 divided by 12,000. So, this is equal to 5 by 6. That means n1 by n2 is in the ratio of 5 is to 6. So, what we understand that n1 is to n2 is equal to 5 is to 6. Correct. So here we are interested in the minimum distance from the central fringe. So minimum distance means minimum value of n, right? Because as the value of n increases, the distance also increases. Correct. So what could be the minimum possible value of n1 and n2? So if they are in the ratio of 5 is to 6, so the minimum possible value could be n1 is equal to 5 and n2 is equal to 6. So this basically tells us that the bright fringe corresponding to n is equal to 5 for lambda 1 will coincide with the bright fringe corresponding to n is equal to 6 for lambda 2. So we got to know that which particular bright fringe of lambda 1 will coincide with which particular bright fringe of lambda 2. So now that we know this, it is very easy for us to calculate the distance of this bright fringe from the central fringe. 
right because now we know the value of n1 we also know the value of n2 so it is very easy for us to calculate y1 because y1 and y2 value will be the same so let's calculate y1 so y1 will be equal to n1 that is 5 into lambda 1 which is 12,000 into capital D which is 2 divided by small d which is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters so this comes out to be 6 millimeter so that means this is the distance from the central fringe where uh, the the fifth bright fringe of lambda 1 will coincide with the sixth bright fringe of lambda 2. So see this question was not very tough but it was little tricky to understand. So it is very important that you read the question carefully and understand it. Right. So the correct option is B. Question number 18. Two coherent sources of different intensities send waves which interfere. The ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity is 25. The intensities of the sources are in the ratio. Okay, so in this case, let us say that these two sources, they have intensities I1 and I2. Now, we have already derived this expression that the ratio of I max by I min is equal to root over I1 plus root over I2 whole square divided by root over I1 minus root over I2 whole square. So this is something which we have already derived in the previous problems also as well as in the theory video also that is the wave optics video of class 12th physics on examphere.com. Okay. So now in this question the ratio of I max to I min is given as 25. Right. So that means this is given as 25 by 1 is equal to this entire thing that is root over i1 plus root over i2 divided by root over i1 minus root over i2 this entire whole square. So we can say that root over 25 by 1 is equal to root over i1 plus root over i2 divided by root over i1 minus root over i2. So root over 25 by 1 is equal to 5 by 1. Right now, let's use componendo and dividendo. What happens in componendo and dividendo? Numerator plus denominator divided by numerator minus denominator. So, 5 plus 1 divided by 5 minus 1. This is equal to numerator is this plus denominator is this divided by numerator is this minus denominator is this. So here we see that these two cancel out, these two cancel out. So we see that 6 by 4 is equal to 2 root over i1 divided by 2 root over i2. Or we can say i1 by i2 is equal to 6 by 4 whole square. So that is 36 by 16 or this is equal to 9 by 4. So the ratio would be 9 is to 4. Question number 19. The slits in a Young's double slit experiment have equal width and the source is placed symmetrically with respect to the slits. The intensity at the central fringe is I0. If one of the slits is closed, the intensity at this point will be. Okay, so here uh, it is something like this. So let's say these are the two slits. This is slit number 1. This is slit number 2. And this is what you see on the screen. So on the screen you actually see series of alternate dark and bright bands. So one dark, one bright, again one dark, one bright, one dark, one bright. And that is how you see it on the screen. And that is what we call as the interference pattern on the screen. Fine. So now here we have to talk about the intensity. So it says that the intensity at the central fringe is I0. Right. So intensity at the central fringe is basically the maximum intensity. Now in general we know that the resultant intensity is equal to I1 plus I2 plus 2 root over I1 I2 cos phi. Now when you talk about maximum intensity, so that maximum intensity must be there at the central fringe if this is the central fringe. So central fringe is like the bright fringe which corresponds to ma maximum intensity and that maximum intensity is I0. So I0 is equal to I1 plus I2 
plus 2 root over i1 i2 that's because for maximum intensity the value of cos phi will be equal to 1 right okay so now here in the question since it is mentioned that the source has been placed symmetrically so the source has been placed somewhere here which is symmetric with respect to both the slits so we can assume that the intensities i1 and i2 they both are equal so let, let's assume that they both are equal so in that case what we can say is this i0 is equal to i instead of i1 we can write it as i so i plus i plus 2 root over i square so that is 4i so we can say i0 is equal to 4i okay now let us consider the scenario that what happens if one of the slits is closed now if let's say that this slit is closed so if you close this slit what will happen the intensity that is coming out from this slit will not come that means i1 will be equal to 0 and what will be i2 i2 will be equal to i because the I mean from I2 the same intensity will be coming out right so therefore in this case what would be the net intensity so the net intensity in this case will be equal to I because from one of the slits there is no intensity coming out right so this I can be written as using this expression this can be written as I0 divided by 4 so the correct option is B. So you understood the logic right when both the slits were open so from here i1 from here i2 so as a result this was your resultant thing right so since the only thing which is given in the question is the intensity at the central fringe therefore we calculated or we derived an expression of the intensity at central fringe so once we have derived this expression so we have made use of it in the second scenario Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.